sé que solo la muerte de mi alma podrá avanzar. Las campanas de San Ángel vibrarán su dulce carrión. Del valle al cielo ofrecerán su alegría y su when you come here and we join our voices together in song. I'm only sorry that trouble brings you here. I'm sorry too, Padre. But I think with the help of my friends over the board here, we'll be able to get this thing straightened out. Well, I'm sure glad you come, Roy. As mayor and sheriff, I can only go so far. Word was sent to the mine this morning for Ramon to meet you here. He'll be along any minute. trouble. Can't do much for him now, boys. He's dead, Cookie. You better start explaining, Ulrich. There ain't much explaining to do. Look him over. You find he's been stealing high-grade ore from the Monarch Mine. That's pure silver. Gridley gave us orders to shoot thieves. You better have plenty of evidence. We've got it. What do you call that? My son. This is the work of the devil. You are murderers. I'll keep this, Cookie. I'm going up to the mine and have a talk with the man who gave those orders. I'm sorry, but Mr. Gridley's busy. Not that busy. Look, nobody's coming up this road without a warrant. On a murder case, I don't need one. Look here. Why are you? They won't bother you anymore, Roy. I'm taking them all in. Get on your horse, you nasty little kid. You know what I, Patria, that feel your spirit is sunk us. Amen. San Angelo. Why? If my men killed anyone, they did it under orders. Anyone else found trespassing and stealing will have the same thing happen to them. This is the second time this has happened. You have no right to take the law into your own hands, and you're not going to get away with it. This is tough country, Rogers. We're in a bad spot here. The Monarch is a small but rich mine here on the Mexican border. While it's all part of the San Angelo Rancho, 
These hills are in Mexico and make a natural getaway for anyone who wants to hold us up. We can't expect any help from San Angelo over here. And the lodge isn't much help. The town's even farther away. So you see, we have to be tough. In my opinion, you're just a little too tough. I'm here to protect the interests of the stockholders. Nobody's going to tell me how to run the Monarch. That goes for you too, Rogers. So that's the way it is. Yes, and that's the way it's going to stay. Not if your men are guilty of murder. My men are guilty. So am I. That's what I'm thinking. Did he frighten you, Cinderella? Well, don't be afraid. I don't think Mr. Rogers is going to be with us very long. Another hound. Oh, Roy, so help me. I was on my way home and he followed yeah, me. Yeah, I know. And as official dog catcher, you had to bring him in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Roy, I'm sorry I had to let them mine guards go, but I couldn't prove that that boy wasn't stealing. After all, you found the silver on his body. I know. What'd it run? It's really pure. According to the assayer, it runs about 18,000 to the ton. Boy, I sure wish I had a boatload of that stuff. Woo-wee! No wonder Gridley's got to be careful with pure silver floating around. That makes this worth about $40. Not much for a man's life. Well, well why'd they shoot him? Why didn't they grab him? He was going to tell us something. Gridley's men got to him first. Well, if you want to go up and take a look around that Monarch mine, I'll give you a search warrant. And tip him off that we're coming? Gridley's too smart for that. He'd cover up before we got up the hill. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Hiya, Buck. <laughs> Where'd you get them duds? All of them from the Zoot Suit Company. Sharp, ain't they? You sure is a hard man to find, Mr. Rogers. I've been trying to catch you for two days with that communication. Did my Western catalog get here yet? Yes, sir, four days ago, but I ain't finished reading it yet. I just got first the song section. tippy tie ya yo get long me a doggy. That's your silly looking outfit. Hey, I wonder if they come in my size. Well, I don't mind trailing thieves and murderers, but this is too much. Please, smokes, fellas, listen to this. Lee Madison will be here Thursday. He's that writer fellow. Lee Madison will arrive on the bus Thursday, make reservations at the lodge, and assist in every way possible in the collection of material for a new novel. Chief Border Inspector, E.M. Moffat. Oh, he writes stories about people like you and me. And he makes us all sound like a bunch of characters who spend their time hanging horse thieves and chasing Indians. Well, let's run the critter out of town. Now, you sound like one of his characters. <laughs> well, it looks like you're going to have to be nice to him, whether you like it or not. I haven't got time to be nice to anyone right now. You boys better be the welcoming committee. Gee, that's swell. We'll do it up in good old Western style. Yeah, did you read Murder on the Border? Golly, I did. It's all about... I know what it's all about. Black-hearted villains and roaring six-guns. I'd like to see him face some of those roaring six guns he writes about. Well, we better get going. The bus will be in this afternoon, and we want to do this upright. Yeah. Oh, I'll be there, too. Hey, maybe we can get Madison to help us with the investigation. Huh? That's what I'm afraid of. An armchair detective like that could ruin our chances of pinning anything on Gridley. Hmm. Well, I never thought of that. I would just... Say, Cookie, huh? what do you suppose Madison would do if he met one of these black-hearted villains with roaring six guns? Oh, I don't... I don't know what he'd do, but I know what I'd do. I'd... I'd... <laughs> I'd catch the first fast train out of town. Uh, Miss Madison, would you mind autographing your book for me, please? Of course not. Gee, just wait till I tell my wife about meeting the famous Lee Madison and how pretty and... Uh, on second thought, I think I'll just show her the autograph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Madison? Huh? Mr. Madison? Huh? 
I say, are you Mr. Lee Madison? Oh, sorry, son. I've got all insurance I can handle. Oh, oh. Uh, are you looking for Mr. Ma... Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lee, but he didn't want any broken down riders hanging around here anyway. Yeah, that's right. Oh, really? Oh, yes, ma'am. He's pretty sore about the whole thing. He's afraid that old funny dad will butt into everything. Oh, I don't know about that. I like his books. So do I. Well, there are no more buses today. <clears throat> See you all later. Goodbye, ma'am. Now, uh, were you going to the lodge? Well, I intended to. Well, swell, come along. Yes. Uh, you better sit up front, miss. I don't think Madison would have, though. <laughs> Roy said that somebody's laughing would take a shot at him for writing those corny books. Shot? Roy says? Oh, oh, yes. Nope. Thank you. Sorry, miss, we didn't catch the name. Oh, uh, Helen. Helen Clifford. Uh, Helen Clifford, fellas. Well, hello, hello you, Helen. Hello. When the rustlers come to town, I just up and shoot them down. Hot lead, hot lead. Makes no difference where they're from. I just up and give them some hot lead. Hot lead. He never called the sheriff. No. back in the wagon. money. He's rich and I'm poor. You mean you rob from the rich and give to the poor? Yeah, that's right. Besides, I don't like you. Why? 
Did you ever read any of those awful Western stories he writes? Awful? Yes, awful. They give us outlaws a bad name. You better come on up here, little girl. Now, if you'll just hold his line steady, you'll be all right till the boys get here. Don't worry. Sorry to have bothered you, ma'am. Goodbye, Robin Hood. See who's here. Yeah. Want me to stick around? Now go back to the mine and get a hold of Roberts. Make sure everything's all right. Just take a mile of rolling past your with a herd of standing by. Sounds like Rogers. It is. Boys dream of heaven. Then at a great big moon is shining high up in the prairie sky. That's a cowboy's dream of heaven. The stars are twinkling, the breeze is whispering low. The boys around the campfire singing songs of long ago. Oh, there's an old guitar strumming out a western melody in that cowboy dream of heaven. While on a distant hill, the coyotes crooning out the harmony in that cowboy dream. He may be weary from riding all the day. But when the shadows fall around, you sure to hear him say, Give me a little bit of rangeland and perhaps a pal or two. That's a cowboy's dream of heaven. And just as long as I am dreaming, I would like a gal who's true. That's a cowboy's dream of heaven. Rogers. Any word from Mr. Madison? I'm sorry, but there haven't been any messages for you at all today. I see. Well, if you do hear from him, will you let me know, please? Certainly. Thanks. Oh. Well, hello there. I met you. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to being bumped around. My name's Clifford, Helen Clifford. I'm a new guest here. Well, I'm Roy Rogers. Oh, not the famous border investigator. Well, I... Say, by the way, where were you this afternoon? We needed you. What was the matter? A masked bandit held us up, and there wasn't a soul around to protect us. Not even a border investigator. I'm sorry, Miss Clifford, but I can't be everywhere at once. Evidently not. Say, by the way, I understand there's quite a bit of trouble around here that, well, people haven't been able to solve. Murders and shootings and some things like that. We're investigating them now. Really? You know, it's such a shame Lee Madison didn't show up. He might have helped you. I think we can do all right without the help of Mr. Madison. Do you know you should read his book, Murder on the Border? Did you ever hear of it? Might give you a solution. What would a hack writer like Lee Madison know about anything? Besides, we have our own ideas down here. Well, Mr. Rogers! <laughs>
That's him. What are you doing spying around here? He won't talk. We've already worked him over. Where's his horse? Cut him loose on the other side of the border. What about Roberts? Should be here about now. Let's go. We'll take him with us. Come on. Maybe you'd like to see what we're doing. Monarch mine, senor. Right. Your Spanish ancestors certainly knew how to dig a mine. We know how to use it. I bet when they dug the San Angelo mine, they didn't expect us to be using it 200 years later. I'm getting more silver out of Mexico than they did. Just around the corner. Go ahead. He said, go ahead. Come on. Plumo, ain't that a Spanish word? Yeah, it means lead. Lead? Who wants lead? Nobody. Who'd ever suspect people of smuggling lead over the border? And only a dope. This is a good idea. Boy, pure silver. Yeah, from the Monarch Mine by way of the old forgotten San Angelo Mine. You must have read in the almanac where silver is cheaper on one side of the border than the other. Gus, what people don't know won't hurt them. People need silver, and I can get it for them. They think this comes from the monarch. What's the difference? Rogers might call it smuggling, but I call it good business. Take that up and put it in the safe. I'm going back to the lodge. OK, boss. Bob, I think that's going to be yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, hello, Cookie. Where have you hello. been? Out in the kitchen? I've been trailing Gridley. Any luck? Well, not much. I followed him to the mine. Hey, Roy, we've been rehearsing a song that Lee Madison wrote. Look at that. Lee Madison? Mm -hmm. I love the West. Oh, ain't that pretty? Cookie. Oh. Isn't it bad enough that he writes books? Uh, may I see that, please? I love the West. How corny can he get? Well, maybe you'd like to sing it with us. Well, perhaps I might if it won't annoy Mr. Rogers too much. Oh, <laughs> don't mind me. Well, that's fine. What's your favorite key? G. K of G, boys. Uh, folks, can I have your attention just a minute? In honor of Lee Madison, who isn't here, Miss Clifford is going to sing one of his songs for you. I love the west, the heavenly, heavenly west, in the very heart of me. It's so much a part of me, and I ever shall return to this land for which I yearn. This seems to bother Mr. Rogers a bit, so um, perhaps we'd better do it his way. A little faster, please. I love the West, the heavenly, heavenly West, where the skies are bluer and the gals are truer, where the grass is greener and the varmints meaner, where life is rougher and the men are tougher. That's why I love the West. And I love the Oh, give me the range for a change Where the 
the wind keeps blowing and the cactus growing where the sun keeps shining and the gals are pining where the light is lighter and the boys are brighter. That's why I love to go where the hero, strong and silent, keeps the little gal from harm. Fighting 20,000 Indians are paying off the mortgage on the farm, yeah. the West, for everything's best in the West, where the days are hotter and the nights are colder, where the young are younger and the older, older where the high is higher and the wet is wetter, where the dry is drier and the best is better, where a man's a man and a rootin' tootin' come on the rain, come on the rain. Hey there, Annie Oakley, you better be careful. Hey, look, Roy, a bullseye. Have you got a hunting license? <laughs> Roy. Yes, Father? One of our sentries is missing. It is Ignacio. We found his horse. Where'd you find him? On the Mexican side. We need your help. You hear that, boys? We sure. Help. Help. Yeah, Bob, you take some of the men. Tim, you take the rest of them. Come with us. Oh, Gridley, coming along? Why? You're the border investigator. I thought maybe you might be of some help to us. You're not intimating I know something about this, Rogers. You can take that any way you want to. Suppose I take it personally. That's all right with me, too. Roy, please. We have more important things. I can vouch for him, Roy. He was up at the mine. That's right, Sheriff. You followed us. Remember? I'm sorry, Padre, but we've searched everywhere. Ah, this is a terrible thing. Much evil has come to San Angelo. But you men must be tired. You've been riding all night. We sure are, Padre. Come in and rest a while. Well, thanks, Padre, but the sheriff and I have got one more place to look before we rest. We better water the horses, Cookie. I'm tired. So am I. Well, where are we going? To the Monarch Mine. The Monarch Mine? Sure. Oh, Roy, you know how they are up there. Why don't we go to town and get a search warrant first? We haven't got time. Committee is. I don't know. This might be a good time for us to look around. It's too quiet. I don't like it. Let's get the horses out of sight. to the monarch mine, Rogers. Where's Gridley? Going to town to get the canary some letters. Move on up the hill. Okay, boys, you can come on now. Glad you showed up, Rogers. 
just in time for the picnic. Eighty boys. Yeah, sure. I warned you about trespassing. Where's your search warrant? I've been... I told you we should have got one, Roy. I wouldn't want you guys to shoot yourselves. Gentlemen, the first event will be an exhibition in the manly art of self-defense. If anybody lays a hand on Rogers, I'll, I'll swear out a warrant for assault and battery. That's what I'll do. Mike will only be defending himself. Won't you? Sure. Why, you... Get up, Roy. Come on, Roy. What's the matter? The picnic's just started. Come on, get up, Roy! I can't help you! Get up, son! Come on, son! Get up! Get out of there! Hang on to him for a second. Get their horses. Let him go. Come on, I'll take you on. I'll help you. Well, come on. Now, calm down, Sheriff. Why, you little... Get your hand off of me. Take it easy, boys. We wouldn't want to hurt the sheriff. It wouldn't be legal. Next time, bring a search warrant. Don't worry. Now get out of here. We got our guns clean. That just about makes us even with them. Let's go back to the mine. That won't help us find out anything, Cookie. There's something going on at the Monarch they don't want anybody to find out about. So far, the only clues we got are the murders. But we can't even prove that they're murders. Well, we will. What's the matter, Trigger? No wonder he was limping. Picked up a rock someplace. Say, isn't that ore? Sure he is. He must have picked that up down by the mine shaft when we hit the horses. We better keep it. It looks like Trigger is smarter than we are. Man, 
You look as if you were mixed up in a violent game of soccer. Do they play it out here? Oh, we play it all right. But the rules are different. Oh, oh by the way, I'm Lionel Bates of Bates, Bates & Johnson, Solicitors of London, England. I'm Roy Rogers. How do you do, sir? <laughs> I, I'm a stranger out here. Well, I never would have guessed it. Huh? This is Sheriff Bullfincher. Howdy. How do you do, sir? Sheriff Bullfincher, you're the very man I've been looking for. I'm trying to find someone in this vicinity. Well, if he's around here, I'll know him. What's his name? Uh, Lancaster. George Wallingford Lancaster. The, the law want him? Well, we've been trying to find him for years through Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Uh, and private uh, investigators in America. Private investigators in America? Oh. <clears throat> Well, it seems to me I remember somebody by that name a, a long time ago around here that, that got, got to running around with bad company, and well, I, I ain't heard of him since. Well, if that's the man, we'll find him. You will? Why, of course. Oh. Well, thank you very much. Oh, uh, and there's one other thing. I wonder if you gentlemen would be kind enough to join me a little later in an important conference. Well, cheerio. And I'm here to arraign the property. Well, does that mean that the rancho shall have a new owner? Undoubtedly. However, I can't tell you who or what the new owner's plans for the rancho will be. What if he won't be reasonable? Suppose we refuse to leave. Well, I'm sorry, but that's no concern of mine. However, I'll do everything possible to see that your people come to no undue hardship. Oh, there is one other thing. If any of you should happen to know the whereabouts of a George Wallingford Lancaster, please let me know. <coughs> you see, it's in this part of the country, and he must be somewhere near. Something wrong with your throat? Um, I felt something tight getting around my neck. <laughs> well, I, uh... I think that's about all, and, and thank you very much. If you should have any questions, I'll be only too pleased to answer them. Mr. Bates, there's something I'd like to ask you. Too bad I missed you at the mine, Rogers. Apparently, my men played a little rough. Yeah, the next time it'll be rougher, Gridley. And I hope you're there. Then you never found any trace of the missing sentry? No trace at all. Just kind of disappeared. Come on, get down. It's a trick I taught him. <laughs> Cookie, do you uh -huh. suppose the missing George Wallingford Lancaster has anything to do with this case? Well, now, we might have... Oh, oh no, I rub... Well, how could he? Uh, but... <clears throat> what are you asking me all those questions for? Yeah, how about that, Ellen? Oh, hello, Roy. Well, I just thought it was sort of interesting, and, uh, well, well, I guess I'll be going. I'll see you boys later. You can go if you want to, but I have something here that's interesting, too. You might want to hear it. This is a report I just got on the ore a trigger picked up in a monarch mine. It says there's a little lead in it, not enough to be commercial, and just a trace of silver. Well, that's funny. Now, the silver found on the body was almost pure. It could have been a plant. Thanks. You catch on fast. Well, I try. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi boys. Boy. We want to see Cookie about his dogs. Well, somebody should see him about them. Yeah, we want to borrow them for a fox hunt. A fox hunt? Yes, yeah, for Mr. Bates, a good old English fox hunt. We want to make him happy. We can, because he promised to do everything he could to help us with a new owner. Yeah, so we'll have a hunt party the first thing in the morning. Now, everyone's invited. How about the dogs, Cookie? Huh? Oh, well, uh, well how big is the fox? Oh, well, we don't know yet. We've got to catch him first. Well, thank you, Cookie. Yeah, come on, boys. Let's go. Hey, boys, I'm going to go with you. Right. See you at the fox hunt. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Be careful of the little fella. It's pretty good a fox hunt for Mr. Bates. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Bates. I can't go to no fox hunt. I gotta get out of here. Yes, you can go to a fox hunt. No, I can't go to no fox hunt. Yes, you can, Mr. George Wallingford Lancaster. Shh, Roy, don't call me that. Don't say that, please. I'll go to the fox hunt. I'll even be the fox, but don't say that again. Shh. Morning. Good morning. Oh, 
no, Roy. <laughs> Cookie. The Sunday call. Oh, welcome, Mr. Rogers. Uh, good morning, Sheriff. Uh, Sheriff, uh, shall we uh, go and have a look at the hounds? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you better let me go first. You might scare the dogs in that outfit. Come on, Roy. I'll be along in a minute, Cookie. I want to find out if two and two still make four. Oh, all right. Well, see you later, Mr. Rogers. Roy. Roy. There's something I must tell you. You've got to go on that fox hunt this morning. Why? Because I'm positive Mr. Bates is in great danger. Oh? You must have been reading Murder on the Border again. Well, maybe you should read it, too. Oh, miss, any word from Madison? Still no word, Mr. Rogers. I'm a little worried. Better put in a call to headquarters for me. I'll take it here. Surely. Operator, long distance, please. It'll be a minute. San Angelo Lodge. This is Captain Moffat's office calling Roy Rogers. Just a minute, please. That's a coincidence, Mr. Rogers. Here's headquarters calling you. That is a coincidence. I'll take it. Hello? This is Captain Moffat's secretary speaking. The captain isn't in right now, but he asked me to tell you that Lee Madison would be unable to come to San Angelo. What happened? She was sick. I, I mean, his mother was ill. I don't think you're telling me the truth, Miss, uh, whatever your name is. But you sound like somebody who needs a good spank. What? Well, you certainly aren't the one that's going to give it to me. And furthermore, I think you're the rudest man I ever met in my life. And I think you're the nosiest girl. You ought to have more respect for other people. I give people respect when they deserve respect. And you certainly don't. Well, just the same, the next time headquarters calls me, Make sure you're not on the other end of the line, because I never want to talk to you again. Hello, Miss Madison. Oh, you... <laughs> you deliberately tricked me. Mm-hmm. And it worked, too. Now, how about a little explaining from you? Well, I found out about what you thought about Lee Madison and her books the day I arrived here. And furthermore, someone even went gunning for her. <laughs> well, look... Uh... I guess that makes us even, Helen. <laughs> OK, Robin Hood. What is that? <laughs> That's just an old British tradition. Oh, oh. Uh, boys, this is Mr. Bates. Come all the way from England over here to hunt a fox. I want you to take him out on the trail and show him a good time. There's certainly a strange bunch of hounds. Uh, do they follow a scent? Huh? Uh, you know, uh, uh, smell. Oh, uh, uh, just a little one. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, uh, that's an English saddle. Well, why didn't they finish it? Where's the rest of it? Uh, that's the sort of saddle that George Wallyford Lancaster might ride. Oh, uh, he would? Uh, certainly. Oh. Hey, Cookie. Huh? We've decided to have you drag the trail. Come on, I want you to meet someone. Cookie, meet Louise. Is that what I got to drag the trail with? My word. You can say that again. Come on. Well, we're going to leave right now. You be sure and give us a good head start. And before you come, blow this. <laughs> There should be some kind of music in it. She would have liked to get up early in the morning. There was such a lot of things to do. To watch the sun come stealing. Over misty hills revealing tiny diamonds sparkling on the dew. It's great just to be living come the dawning. Everything is clean and bright and new. Gee, but I like to get up early in the morning so I can spend a longer day with you. 
My, but it's pleasant to be arising at this hour of the day. My, word it is. There are such a jolly lot of things that you can do, don't you know? To see the dawn of break and do the sound of earth awaken with the rooster there to take his seat. Don't worry, Rogers won't finish. And to know another night is true. Gee, but I like to get up early in the morning so I can spend the longer day with you. Gee, but I hate to get up early in the morning. I would rather sleep the whole day through. Oh, come on, Louise. You don't know what a pretty cat you'd make. The silly business. Sheriff having to drag a wise bait along. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, mind if I join you? Why should I? It's Mr. Bates' party. Yes, I know. Did you hear that? That's it. Here they come.
saddle. Where's Bates? Well, I don't know. He's oh, right yeah. behind me there. Yeah, he's coming on that last uh, jump. Uh, uh, there he comes now. Well, he sure had me worried. We were worried about the guest of honor. We thought you were lost. It looks like something happened to him. Is he hurt bad? I don't know. Stand back and give him air, boys. Carl, there's a spring up that canyon. Will you get some water for us, please? Sure, Roy. Looks like he's been gun whipped. He could have hit a branch. I don't think so. Who would have wanted to kill Mr. Bates? You have a wide choice, miss. Our friends over the border might. The boys at the lodge might. Or even... I might. Anyone who could gain by his removal. Uh, hey, Pat, if, if he ain't dead, do you think that bump on his head will make him lose his memory? My word. Oh, oh, my head. Oh, look, he's opening his eyes. Oh, he'll be able to remember everything. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> Roy, I'm checking out tonight. That Mr. Bates is liable to find out who I am any minute. Oh, wait a minute, Cookie. You can't run out on me now when I need you the most. As far as Bates is concerned, I'm on your side, and I think you'll listen to reason. Well, I still wish he'd go away. So does somebody else. What do you mean? Whoever tried to kill him. Yeah, I wonder who that was. You heard Gridley. He named the suspects, and it could be you. You have a stronger motive than they have. Me? Roy, you don't mean that. Oh! Here's the silver we found on the murdered boy. It's almost pure. Lee was right, it was a plant. Here's the real ore from the Monarch. There isn't enough silver in a ton of it to pay their light bill. I wonder where they got this silver. I think they got it across the border, where it's cheaper. Smuggling? They couldn't do it without getting caught. We watched that border like a hawk. Say, Cookie, didn't you tell me there was an old Spanish mine across the border? Oh, the old timers around San Angelo talk about it, but nobody knows where it is. I think I know one old timer that might. Come on. Anno Domini, seventeen fifty-one. That was very long ago. <laughs> That's before I got here. <laughs> Here's some funny writing here. Sergeant So Humbre. Ah, that may mean something. Perhaps this is what we are seeking. Sergente Sole Humbre et Colonium Virium Virium. As the sun rises, the shadow of my arms and the pillar of my strength shall mark that which God made and from whence came the bells of San Angelo. That's beautiful. But what does it mean? The shadow of my arms and the pillar of my strength. Arms and pillar. That must be a cross. Cookie, do you know where there's a cross around here? Sure. Up on top of the church. No, I mean up in the hills near the border, where the mine could be. None now, Roy. There was an old shrine many years ago to which the people came to pray to Santa Guadalupe at Easter. Sure, Padre, I remember. On your side of the border here, near some rim rock. Okay, let's see if we can find it. I've got an idea. Thanks, Padre. Here it is. I remember, here's where we used to come to Easter sunrise services when I was a kid. How tall was the cross? Oh, gee, I don't remember, Roy. Well, I'd say with a base that size, it'd be about eight or 10 feet tall. What was it the Padre said? As the sun rises, the shadow of my arms... The sun comes up over there. It should cast a shadow in that direction. Isn't the border over there by those red hills? Runs right along the top of them. The Monarch Mine's over there, too. Right on the other side of that hill. Well, if the old San Angelo Mine's over there, it looks to me like we'd see some ruins or something. Well, after all these years and years, the rain has washed all traces away. People have looked for it. Well, it must be in that direction. Let's have a look. Hey! What's with an 
Toby will be doing around here? They could be smuggling silver. Could be tourists, too. Now, you don't sound like Lee Madison. You think you can trail these Kit Carson? A horseback or a foot? Look, looks like they stopped right there. Yeah. Wonder what for? Now, I don't know anybody would park around here in the border way over there. Nothing to do around here. I... Roy! Cookie, go get the flashlight out of my saddlebag. Uh-huh. Roy, if this is the old San Angelo mine, then your hunch was right. Yeah. Hurry up, Cookie. Yeah, 
Is that any way to treat a lady? I caught her coming out of the old Spanish mine. Mine? Yeah, Rogers and the sheriff are still in there. to block the entrance. Send someone back to guard Miss Madison. Right. Sit down. How did they find the mine? By looking. Don't be funny. Just answer my questions. Does anyone else know about it? Before we're through, Miss Madison, you'll be talking like a magpie. Is that for me, Gridley? Yes. This is Miss Nosy Madison. Watch her. Sure. It's a pleasure. We blocked the back way. Good. We better find them. in a minute. They'll wait for your signal to move in. Oh, 
Boy, you sure had us worried when Trigger come in alone. You wasn't leave with him? Gosh, no, Roy. What must have happened to her? Well, she must have been here. Here's her hat. Emma, boy. All right, go find her. and keep your hands up.
The picnic's just started. about you. <laughs> She's all right. Hey, you missed her a mile, Roy. That was a good trick. <laughs> that was quick thinking, Lee. Thanks for the help. I'm certainly glad you finally got around to reading murder on the border, page 77. You're glad. I'm glad you wrote it. <laughs> Come on. You'll find Gridley over there in those rocks. You better go get him. Right. I say, Rogers, how exciting. Uh, so you've got your man. Yeah, well, yeah, we we got him all right. Well, take him in for me, will you? I gotta be going. Goodbye, Mr. Bye. Bates. And there's your man, Mr. Bates. Roy! That's the dirtiest double crossness trick I ever heard of. I thought you were a friend of mine. And I thought you were a friend of mine. Instead, you're George Wallingford Lancaster, wanted by Scotland Yard. What's that? There he is. Don't you move. I've got you covered. Come on. The other things are yours. Oh. Well, what about Scotland Yard and the cattle? They were all yours. You are the sole heir to the estate. And nobody has to leave the rancho? Not unless you say so. It's all yours. Mine? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll take it. Come on, get out of here. Shut your mouth. Resistant an Earl. <coughs> Enough local color? Enough for just the best story I ever wrote. I'm going to call it The Bells of San Angelo. You'll never guess who it's about. The Earl of Lancaster, naturally, old girl. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, or I'll trade you in for an English bulldog. <laughs> 